Welcome back to Clark County today. Our guest is a city council member from Washougal. Yes. I got it right that time. Yes. And you, we just discussed a interesting walkout, which ended up being a reasonable thing to do yes. in order to get things back on track. Yes. Uh, I would like people to to, dis, to find out about just kind of how healthy are the relationships and how healthy is the business moving forward when it comes to the council member makeup. Do you often have differences in the, when you sit down and there's, try to conduct yeah, the, a meeting? The, yeah, there's, a, there's a, uh, a distinct difference. There are some on the council that are kind of holdovers from the last city administration that have been on there a long time. And then there's another group that are kind of the newer members of okay. the council. So you got senior and, and junior. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, Does that play into the interactions very much? I, I think it does in regards to worldview, uh, in regards to what Define exactly. Worldview, not everybody knows what. Yeah, that term I guess means. Uh, from worldview, I guess it, uh, in the role and the function of, of governments, and what is the purpose of government, and why are we in these positions? Okay. I think you see a distinct difference okay. from what kind of legislation is important versus what isn't okay. important. Okay, for a city, mm -hmm. you can you define what is in your view, sure. the, your worldview that defines the role, uh, the pro appropriate sure. role for the city of Camas. I <laughs> keep doing that. That's my I'm thing. not going to speak for Camas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more time. <laughs> Washougal. It's the W part of yeah. the alphabet. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for the Washougal. Yeah. It's a small town. Yes. And uh, just um, it, it's got its own little character. Mm -hmm. What is the appropriate role for this city as governed by the city council? Three threefold. In such a town. Yeah, threefold. Uh, in regards to what is the um, purpose of government, which I think is what you're trying to get at for our local city. Yes. Uh, I think first and foremost is law enforcement, keeping order. Okay, um, yeah. Cam uh, uh, Washougal has its own police department? Yes. Okay. And also, and, and, but it's also fire, it's, it's first responders, it's, it's the, that is the important function of local government. Okay, so uh, so Washougal has its is its own entity, mm -hmm. own police department, mm -hmm. own fire department, yes. and you don't share that with the county or with uh, the... We do share, we do share uh, it, with Camus in regards to if uh, they need assistance or if we need assistance, sometimes we'll go back and forth. Uh, so the, we do share an, AM, uh, an EMS service, an ambulance okay. service. So that's kind well. of borrowing from the adjacent town. Right. But normally when, when things are normal, mm -hmm. you are your own yes, police department. Self -sufficient, okay. Yes, we're self-sufficient, So the proper role is make sure that those yes. emergency services are covered. Emergency services are covered. Okay. Uh, the next is infrastructure. We need to make sure that our roads are solid, that we're, that we're forward thinking mm -hmm. in regards to how do we um, uh, make the um, infrastructure palatable for business. Okay. So that we have roads that are appealing and attractive to lure business into the community. So transportation. Transportation okay. is is the other, and then also just I think the other function is to create a business climate, and we do that by withdrawing a lot of regulations on the businesses and allow businesses to thrive to be able to keep more of their money to invest in the community, or if they see Washougal as a competitive advantage because our regulations are so slim they'll want to move to our area and say, you know, this, this city government gets it. They understand that the purpose of government is not to, um, to stranglehold business, but rather to allow it to be as free as possible. Okay, so your view on that is that the role of the city of the city of government mm -hmm. is to make sure that it's a, you are a winner when it comes to competition, because yes. you're competing for other for businesses that are, yeah. that are deciding where should we move. We may yes. have businesses that are fleeing from yes. the financial situation in California, almost bankrupt state, right. and saying, where ought we to go? Yes. And you want to make sure that the city of Washougal presents itself as an attractive, business-friendly place. Yes, and, we, and we've done that. Uh, we, were actually, we actually cut property taxes for the first time in our city's history in the last year. Really? Yes. How did we, you do that? We just, I just brought it forward. I, I sponsored it and said, hey, this is really what we should do in this kind of climate. We voted and we re reduced it by just 1%, but it was still the first time in our history that we ever reduced the amount of uh, taxes we collected. So the, uh, I'm not aware of any other city that's no. reducing property taxes. Yes. Uh, most everybody at this point is saying, why don't, why don't we raise them because yes. We just can't meet this deficit. There, there's, they need to make sure they live within their means. They need to be able to balance the budget. 
I assume that the city of Washougal is not in debt. You're balancing your budget each year. Yes. Yeah, we are balancing our budget. This year we actually had to cut a lot of money and uh, uh, had to, to make a lot of sacrifices and cut a lot of the fat off of the budget. And we're going to have to come back with the kind of where we're looking at with forecasting in the next year. We're going to have to come back and probably cut another, you know, million, a little less. Okay. Uh, we're, Where, so, did you cut across the board? Did you cut police, it, fire? They've got no. Where did you, got, where'd you cut? Well, basically, we, we went to police, and the police were very reasonable. And they came back at, at us with a contract and said, uh, listen, we won't take any um, increases. We'll take a 1%, and then that'll be it hmm. for the next three years. That's uh, a so, contrast to Vancouver. Vancouver, yes. we just, if I understand correctly, we just simply had uh, a significant increase. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than police and fire being knowing they're in a, their essential services, yes. uh, still they they they're a sizable, taxable I mean or tax burden yes. on a city, a, a necessary one. But for them to at that point to be raising theirs a significant amount versus in this case one percent. You said they they went yeah. up, they they still didn't cut. They still went up one percent. Right. On the, How, on the, tra the trajectory you... that they were heading on was at about three to four percent increase. Okay, and so that so was reasonable in comparison. It was, yes, it was very reasonable, okay. and, and then they take no increases for the next three years. Uh, I think it really sets the tone for future negotiations with other. So they're uh, leading by so example. Right. right. Okay. Right. And so where did the cuts come from? Uh, basically, we just decided not to hire, um, and we did some lateral transfers okay. uh, within the department. Um, and uh, I believe some folks, don't hold me to this, but I think some folks were close to retirement. Uh, so there were some, just some things so that were... So natural attrition. Yes. You're not replacing the, the normal people that would be leaving right. the salary positions anyway. And the other thing we rely on heavily is uh, our police reserves. Uh, people who volunteer to be police officers that are trained and, and are able to, they give up their time to be a police officer. That is a really interesting... Uh, topic. Yes. Uh, several months ago, I had the privilege of riding along with a volunteer sheriff, mm. and that was a eye-opening experience. I didn't realize that uh, we have, I believe, 32 volunteer uh, police officers in this county that regularly volunteer for every city yes. except Vancouver. Mm. The city of Vancouver m has made it illegal for these officers to volunteer because the, the the union or the guild, whatever they have there, hmm. said, no, nope, we don't want that. Hmm. That's too threatening. Hmm. And I'm thinking, you guys are able to, are able to cash in on that. Yes. Volunteer help. They don't get paid yes. anything. No. It's amazing. They donate their time. And you can't tell the difference between a volunteer and, right. a, and a salaried officer yeah. out there. They're both fully equipped, fully yeah. trained, and they have a, normally a full-time job somewhere. Yes. And they're spending their extra hours I think it's a minimum of 20 hours a month. It's amazing, yes. which is a minimum. Yes. And a lot of these guys are doing more. Yes. So I'm very so. grateful that, or should I say thankful, that these officers have the green light yes. to volunteer, the freedom to volunteer, because yes. they care. Yeah, our police union is very reasonable, and they have been uh, a, uh, um, a real joy to work with, uh, in, especially in, in our past negotiations. and some of the things that, you know, bringing the issues and concerns up of the officers to the city. So that's been a real, it's been a real pleasure. Great. When it comes to building permits, I assume they yes. go through the city yeah. for that? We actually, uh, this past year, we adopted, as a council, we adopted a, uh, uh, basically a moratorium on impact fees up front. So a business can come in, commercial can come in, build, and they don't have to pay any of their impact fees. Really? Until occupancy. You're able to take away all the impact fees. Yes. And minus, the, to, minus the schools. The schools wouldn't bend. I understand. So, yeah. uh, uh, minus, your, and, and you're able to reduce your property taxes. Yes. And you're able to balance your budget, yes. live within your means with natural attrition and with reasonable cuts, and yes. still keep your a healthy police department, mm -hmm. healthy fire department, yes. and the city operating yes. in a way that is, is encouraging businesses to come. Yes. That sounds way too reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, been, it's been the work of our uh, city staff who have really uh, grabbed hold, uh, I think, of, of uh, um, just a, a different way of doing government now. 
I mean, we're not in the fat days of 2005 and 2006. Times have changed. We have, and we've got to change with it. The government has to change with it. Now, all of this sounds like you're in favor of all those things that have brought this health, yes. even during this downturn of the economy, yes. to this local city. Correct. Has everybody on the city council, uh, are they on board? Are they, they think like you and they're pulling for the same direction and they, you guys are pretty much unanimous on this? Well, and that's what's interesting about the council. While we have our differences, we do um, seem to be able to make a lot of ground in a couple areas. Uh, one is uh, on economic development mm -hmm. um, and also uh, in regards to law enforcement. Uh, and, we see, and we seem to be able to work on some accountability measures as well being placed within the government to protect the taxpayers. Um, until this recent episode uh, of accountability. So uh, normally you're on the same wavelength. Normally you're uh, on a lot of issues. Yes. So um, the, this uh, worldview you're speaking of is really not something that divides the council three two or, or you know. Uh, I, did, I ran a study. Uh, 2010 uh, was the first year we had this full council. Mm -hmm. We took 372 votes in that first year. Out of those 372 votes, 357 of them were basically they were not divided votes. Great. Um, out of that, which is healthy, right? Out of that, 27 of those votes um, uh, were not 27, but uh, over three fourths of those votes. Um, I'm sorry, 27 of those votes that we took were split between three four. Okay. Okay. And uh, and so when they were split, when you even look those even further, three fourths of that number, okay, mm -hmm. um, was divided, but went the way the mayor wanted. Okay. okay, and the others went the way uh, necessarily that I was on and, and the side we were going for. So really we had about less than 8% of a difference in how we voted. Which is good. Those 27, and, yeah. was there, were those important issues? I think one of the issues that probably highlights the, uh, the distinct worldview difference is that uh, the prior administration that was in there and then the current administration adopted it was to put roundabouts on Highway 14. Uh-huh. And, and those of us that are in business or, or know people who are in business. Roundabouts, roundabouts on Highway on 14. Highway, yes. we, I think of Highway 14 as a freeway. Yes. <laughs> and a roundabout <laughs> is like a 15 mile an hour yes. in place of a stop sign. Yes. So we had a battle about that and we split and we killed, we ended up getting rid of the roundabouts and, and what I would like to see is and what I'm opting for is for us to have a, a new interchange at sure. 27th Street and uh, to be able to get our truck traffic and, and a lot of our um, uh, other uh, cars and so forth and economic development, people who work in the businesses in those areas, be able to get up out of the city and onto the highway faster. Okay, uh, Highway 14, there must be a particular intersection. There, there is intersections already uh, an overpass over Highway, or over uh, 27th Street. And so the 27th Street goes under and uh, Highway 14, but it's already made, so all that we have to do is put um, a diamond interchange there uh, to be able to get cars up and out. Okay, so you want to put a diamond interchange yes. in the place of an over, uh, there's, there's an overpass. You, so the roundabouts, are, they're not on the freeway, right, they, they were talking about? Well, the roundabouts were going to be on the freeway. How can that be? <laughs> it's like, it seems it's, so it's part of extreme. It, it, yeah, it's you, a, put a it's round, a you would not put a roundabout on high on I five, right? It's part of the uh, part of an, an a green agenda type thing where they're wanting to slow traffic down and you know kind but of did they call that away. a traffic calming? Yes, <laughs> I think so. It's so funny how it's, they end up with terminology that makes yeah. it sound very nice and friendly and ends up saying uh, doing what? Yes, yeah. is it going to? <laughs> so, so we end up, you know, we end up getting rid of those roundabouts out of the out of the package well, that we were that, asking that, for. Uh, and wisdom prevailed there. I, yes, as I see yeah, it. but it was a three-four vote, and uh, okay. you know, the, the the council members that kind of hold to the way the former administration worked really wanted those roundabouts in there. Wow. So <laughs> we. Uh, I'm but, glad I asked you about that, and I'm yeah. glad that that uh, you were on the right side there. Yeah, yes. there was a majority there. Yeah.